Welcome to edupediaworld.com. This is Somja J. Nair, your online tutor. The chapter is Sexual Reproduction in Flowering Plants. In the last video, we have already discussed about the female and male reproductive structures of the plant. In the preceding sections of the chapter, we have already learned that the male and female gametes in flowering plants are produced in the pollen grain and embryo sac respectively. As both types of gametes are non-motile, they have to be brought together for fertilization to occur. And pollination is that mechanism to achieve this objective. Transfer of pollen grains that which sheds from the anther to the stigma of a pistil that is termed as pollination. The pollen may be transferred from anthers to the stigma of the same or different flowers. Flowering plants have evolved an amazing array of adaptations to achieve pollination. They make use of external agents to achieve pollination. This is the representation of pollination. Here you can see the transfer of pollen grains which is shedding from the anther to the stigma of a pistil. Different kinds of population. Depending on the source of pollen, pollination can be divided into three types. Autogamy, Ethnogamy, Synogamy. Autogamy. In this type of pollination is achieved within the same flower. Transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of the same flower. In a normal flower which opens and exposes the anthers and stigma, complete autogamy is rather rare. Autogamy in such flowers require synchrony in pollen release and stigma respectively. And also the anthers and stigma should lie close to each other so that the self-pollination can occur. Some plants such as Viola, Oxalis, Camellina produce two types of flowers. Chasmogamous flowers and Clastrogamous flowers. This is an example of a self-pollinated flower. Chasmogamous flowers. Chasmogamous flowers which are similar to the flowers of other species with exposed anthers and stigma and clistogamous flowers which do not open at all. In such flowers, the anthers and stigma lie very close to each other. When anthers dehis in the flower buds, pollen grains come in contact with stigma to affect pollination. The clistogamous flowers are invariably autogamous as there is no chance of cross pollen landing on stigma. Clistogamous flowers produce assured seed set even in the absence of pollinators. This is an example of casogamous flowers and clistogamous flowers. Here you can see that the casmogamous flowers are open and the clistogamous flowers are closed. So self pollination will occur within the flower. Gethnogamy Transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of another flower of the same plant. Although gethnogamy is functionally cross-pollination involving a pollinating agent, genetically it is very similar to autogamy since the pollen grain come from the same plant. Synogamy Transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of a different plant. This is the only type of pollination which during pollination brings genetically different types of pollen grains to stigma. So here you can see the different kinds of pollination. The self pollination in which the pollen grain from the same flower will go to the same female reproductive part of the flower. That is the self-pollination autogamy and gethnogamy. In this also, pollen grain from one flower is transferred to another flower in the same plant. And cross-pollination here, some agents are needed like bees and they transfer pollen grain from different plant to another one. So that it will create variety of plants flowers and finally end up in variety of plants. 
agents of pollination. Pollination is brought about by various external agents. The important pollinating agents are divided into abiotic agents and biotic agents. The abiotic agents are wind and water. The biotic agents are insects, birds and bats. Based on the nature of pollinating agents, pollination may be of three types. There are anemophily, hydrophily and zoophily. Anemophily. Pollination by the agency of wind is called anemophily or wind pollination. The wind pollinated flowers are called anemophilous flowers. For example, coconut palm, date palm, maize, different varieties of grasses, cannabis, etc. Characters of anemophilous flowers. Anemophilous flowers are unisexual in nature. They don't have any showy coloration or they will never secrete nectar. They lack scent. The anthers and stigma of anemophilous flowers are exposed and projected outside the flower. Pollen grains of these flowers are very small, smooth and dry in nature and it will be produced in large quantities. For example, a single cannabis flower produces 5 lakh pollen grains. In plants like grasses, anthers are versatile. The stigma of the carpels are feathery in nature. Movement of pollination is non-directional in case of anemophilus flowers since the agent is wind and it involves long distance with respect to the direction of wind. For example, large quantities of winged pollen grains of pine tree have been found hundreds of kilometers away from parent plant. Windborne pollen grains of certain plants causes hay fever and bronchial allergy in human beings. These are the example of anemophilus flowers. Coconut palm, date palm, cannabis, hydrophily. In some aquatic plants, pollination may be brought about through the medium of water. Pollination by the agency of water is said to be hydrophily or water pollination. The water pollinated flowers are called hydrophilus flowers. Example, Sostra, Keratophyllum, etc. Hydrophily is of two types. They are hypohydrophily and epihydrophily. What is hypohydrophily? It is a true hydrophily which always occur below the surface of water. For example, Sostra and Creatophyllum. Epihydrophily. It always takes place over the surface of water. Example, Valisernia, Lemona, etc. So how the Sostra is a hypohydrophilic in nature? Because the Sostra marina is a submerged marine angiosperm. The pollen grains of Sostra are elongated and needle-like and without any exit. When they reach the stigma, they coil around it and germinate. Creatophyllum is also a submerged freshwater plant. Each male flower of this plant produces 30 to 45 stamens. The anthers, abscess or cut off at the base and flow to the surface of water and they hiss there. These pollen grains which liberated germinate and sing in water. While singing, they come in contact with stigma of female flowers to affect pollination. Valisonia is epihydrophilic in nature. How? This palisonia is also a submerged aquatic plant, which is dioecious in nature. The flowers are unisexual. The male flowers occur in clusters on the short stack of the male plant. When they mature, they get detached from the stack and reach to the surface of the water. On the surface of the water, the male flower opens up and the stamens are exposed. The female flower arises singly on long stacks from the female plant. When it matures, 
the pedicle elongates and reaches to the surface of the water the floating male flower gather around the female flower and come in contact with it on the surface of the water the pollen grains are deposited from the stamens to the stigma of the female flower afterward the perinet closes and the female flower sinks down by coiling of the pedicle then the fruit develop under the water what are the characteristics of hydrophilus flowers these flowers are very small and inconspicuous sepals petals or perineal segments are unwettable due to waxy coating over it they are never colored showy or never produce nectar they lack scent the pollen grains of these hydrophilus flowers are very light and it covered with wax stigma is very sticky but it is unwettable these are the examples of hydrophilus flowers the first one is ostra which is a hypohydrophilic flower then second one is also a hypohydrophilic in nature keratophyllum and the third one is valisonia which is epihydrophilic and the last one is lamina that is also epihydrophilic in nature sophili pollination by the agency of animals is called sophili the animal pollinated flowers are called sophilus flowers based on the type of animal sophili may be of different types important them are endemophili ornithophili chiropetrophili here you can see the photographs of all three different types of sophili endemophili insect pollinate a majority of flowers pollination by the agency of the insect is said to be endemophili or insect pollination insect pollinated flowers are called endemophilous flowers the flowers of families like asteraceae and labiata are generally pollinated by bees and butterflies salvia is a very good example from the family of labiata which is usually pollinated by honey bee what are the different characteristics of endemophilus flowers endemophilus flowers are large and brightly colored for attracting the insects they produce fragrance and nectar to attract the bees and butterflies the fragrance may be very pleasant like jasmine rose and all sometime it will have foul odor like rafflesia they produce good amount of nectar and these will act as a food to insect the honey or pollen grains usually act as a food to the insect the pollen grains of these endemophilus flowers will be usually sticky and spiny it will stick to the insect and it go to the other flowers the stigma is also sticky and inserted ornithophily pollination by the agency of bird is called ornithophily or bird pollination and the bird pollinated flowers are called ornithophilus flowers example coral tree bottle brush and bombax the pollinating birds always having long beaks which are almost equal to the length of corolla tube example sunbirds and hummingbirds the characteristics of ornithophilus flowers are the very large in size and beautifully colored they are scentless they produce nectar and the pollen grains are very sticky and adhere to the body of the bird chiropetrophily pollination by the agency of bat is called chiropetrophily or bat pollination and the flowers are called chiropetrophilus flowers for example aransonia tigelia pinnata musa bats are nocturnal animals and transport pollen grains over long distance up to 30 km and characteristics of chiropetrophilus flowers are they are large in size they are dull colored with fruity odor they produce numerous prominent stamens they produce large quantity of pollen grains and produce abundant nectar what are the needs and significance of pollination the first one it lead to the fertilization and production of seeds and fruits and it always ensure the continuity of plant life plant life 
to always stimulate the ovary to grow promote seed and fruit development the seed and fruit formed after pollination and fertilization are a good source of nutrition for animals including human beings cross pollination produce new plants with characters from different plants cross pollination enable us to produce new healthy disease resisting and high yielding varieties of plants thank you in the next video we will be discussing about pollen germination fertilization etc